Hi everyone, welcome to Trophy Pursuit. We are entering the second week of January and deer season is coming to a close here in Iowa. So this afternoon, Jason Bourbonnet and I decided to run down here to one of the farms I hunt. We're wanting to get some late season inventory. So we brought a few bags of monster meal feeder pellets. We're gonna put them out in front of our cameras. We're done hunting for the year. We really wanna get a good idea of what deer are still in the area. And then we're gonna monitor those whitetails and uh, as they start to shed their antlers, we'll know when to go in and look, know what bucks are where. It's a really good way to uh, get a good idea of what deer made it through the season, as well as when to start looking for those shed antlers. So this food plot that we're gonna put the monster meal feeder pellets in is actually an arrow seed brassica plus plot. And as you can see behind me, we've got about two acres planted. The deer have been absolutely annihilating it. Um, one thing that really impressed me, not only was the food plot, but was the arrow seed green screen that we planted on the uh, the eastern border of it. It has withstood, you know, high winds, rain, snow, ice, and most of it is still over 10 foot tall. So that's a really good testament to the arrow seed um, green screen. I will definitely be planting a lot more of that next year. So for the time being, we're gonna get that work done. While we're doing that, I want you guys to enjoy the show. We're gonna start things off with Jason Bourbonnet during late muzzleloader season here in Iowa. Jason uh, was hunting a new farm he never hunted before. We worked at a deal with the farmer to leave in some standing beans, and Jason actually used two muddy bale blinds, put one on each end of it so he could hunt it with either wind, utilized the muddy pro cams on time-lapse mode, honed in on a buck, moved in, and after the third time of trying to kill him, finally connected. After that, we're going to follow on with Mike Valier. Uh, Mike and Chad Lathrop had been going after this buck all year. Chad had many encounters with him during bow season. Mike came in during uh, Iowa's second shotgun season and was finally able to seal the deal out of a muddy outdoors bull box blind. So keep checking back into Trophy Pursuit. Next Monday, we're going to watch Taylor Riggin as he kills his big eight pointer, a buck that he called the heavyweight eight, a buck that he has quite the storyline with. And then the week after that, we're going to follow along with my season and uh, when I finally filled a tag on a buck that I called the Old Ten. So we've got a lot of good hunts coming your way still on Muddy's Trophy Pursuit. Don't forget to check it back in every Monday. December 19th, the first day of late season muzzleloader here in Iowa. We're sitting here in a uh, muddy bell blind overlooking an acre standing beans. We've got a uh, camera over here that's been on time lapse mode and it's been showing one really nice buck and then another buck showed up a couple days ago with him. So we got bright blue skies, high pressure for the deer move tonight, so stick with us. As daylight quickly faded, the buck that we called Beamer stayed just out of range and would live to be chased another day.
got set up here in the blind and we're trying to get situated and Chris looks up and goes deer in the field <laughs> that looks like three does feeding already so it's a good sign hopefully hopefully the big boy shows up early tonight and gives us a shot so the setup we got here this is a new farm that um, we got permission to hunt this year and we decided to leave about an acre of standing beans on for late season we've got a muddy bell blind on each end of the field so we can hunt it with a north and south wind it turns out this week you know first week of muzzleloader we've had a south wind so that's worked out really well for us As day number two came to a close, beams came out at last light just as he did on day number one. However, this time there was not enough camera light to capture any footage. The story of beams continues. It's almost 40 degrees out and normally you want cold temperatures for late season. We're going in after a buck I call beams. We're hoping these deer are gonna move. We'll see what happens. Stick with us, we'll see you in the blind. Today was going to turn out 20 when we were getting the blind today it was 29 mile an hour winds and we didn't see a deer till about 4 15 the wind 
finally laid down a little bit. And <laughs> I just shot the biggest buck of my life. That is awesome. We had, I don't know, seven little bucks out in the field and we were just thinking, he's gotta show up, gotta show up. The and cameras have been telling us he's yeah, been here. Yeah, the cameras are telling us he's been here and it looks like he's coming out of this low spot right here. And sure enough, he did. Couldn't have asked for anything better. That's awesome. Gosh. How did he just, I mean, we watched the two little bucks were staring at him when he was coming in. Chris looked over and goes, oh, there he is. He's coming. Sure enough, probably uh, 75 yards. Thanks, buddy. Got yeah, it done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go take a look at it. Yeah. my biggest buck <laughs> biggest buck to date for sure that's a stud man good deer awesome running the muddy trail cameras up here on these beans and this buck and another one started showing back up it wasn't every day but they were definitely showing up in the beans when the weather was bad so when they needed to eat tonight Chris turned and looked down into the CRP and here he came Rest is history. My biggest buck to date. That right beam is huge. Yeah. Jason had went the prior two years without filling a buck tag. At the end of the day, chasing big whitetails isn't for everyone. I can guarantee you that there will be more downs than ups, that one will hunt 20 times as many days as tags filled, but one will also learn so many valuable life lessons. For instance, when it seems impossible, keep pushing forward. When you feel like quitting, push even harder. Prepare, prepare, and prepare some more. And when it all comes together, savor the memories, respect the life that you've taken, and remember that the hunt never ends. Hey guys, Mike Blair here from Muddy. We are out chasing a deer we call High Roller tonight. Nasty, wintry, snowy mix, rain. Um, we deferred to the comforts of the bull blind tonight, overlooking a sweet turnip plot. Uh, deer haven't really been hitting turnips this year, but uh, typically this plot late season is really good. Chad and I both had some success over it um, in the late gun season, second gun and late muzzleloader here in southern Iowa. So. Um, here we are, second day, second gun. We actually wanted to be sitting on another plot um, that we have on this farm, but due to the northwest wind, we couldn't get in there. Um, so we're kind of going here. We, we don't have pictures of high roller. We have one picture of them in here in the morning, one morning. Hopefully, uh, history proves uh, above trail cameras today, and he shows up in this plot for us, so. Well, it was a pretty slow night until late. Um, had a couple deer funnel in. Just kind of blows me away. We're, you know, about three feet off the ground. We have this bull blind on a little portable trailer and we've had it set up in here for over a year now. But at one point we had seven deer, uh, two bucks and five does, all within about 15 yards. And it's just so cool. It's such an intimate setting. Those deer are so close and they have absolutely no clue you're here when you get these blinds in place and put up the curtain kits and you know black the back of them out. I mean we're in here we had a heater going and, and there's two of us in here and I mean deer that close and to just go undetected it's so cool it's so much fun. 
beautiful night, great sit. Mr. Big didn't show up, but we'll be back and hopefully we'll catch up to him. So it's just awesome to be able to come out here and do this and enjoy Southern Iowa. Well, here we go. Second gun here in Iowa. We are headed into the heart of the storm. It's 12 degrees, 25 mile an hour winds, blowing snow. And the ground's kind of ice covered. We got a little ice too. We, uh, boy, we were we were 15 minutes away from being heroes yesterday. Potentially, snuck into the blind and bumped a couple. One good one for sure. I don't think it's the deer we're after. High rollers, the deer that we're after. It's Buck that Chad name. Um, he's kind of he's kind of gotten by us this year. We've been close a couple different times. Um, I've had him at 40. Chad's had him within 30 on a couple occasions. Um, so I kind of renamed him Felix because he's got nine lives. This thing just, we're so close, but yet so far, just like you, like you often are with these big bucks. But So last night was pretty much like nails on a chalkboard. We snuck in, bumped deer on our way in, had deer come into the plot, spook. Wind was supposed to be southeast. It ended up being east, straight east and northeast, which was not the right wind for where we were set up. And uh, it, it, was, it was a long, stressful night. Uh, we don't really like bumping deer, and we pretty much did it all night long. So... Um, we're headed back in there tonight, nasty, cold, brutal, um, kind of one of those nights where you're wondering, are they just going to, you know, tuck in in bed all day and, and not even really feed, or is it going to really push them to get out there and feed and feed early? So we're headed in a little bit earlier than what we normally have been getting in, and uh, hopefully the right one shows up. So we're going to get in there, try and catch up to High Roller or Felix or some other big buck here in Iowa. So we're going to give it a shot. sweated up when he got this much clothes on. Lots of times we can come through the field to access this, but that's with the southwest, southeast wind. Today we got northwest coming in the back way. Probably blow the whole field out again like yesterday. Hopefully not. Much better result than yesterday as far as accessing goes we'll see now if we even see a deer we may have just blown them all out yesterday and that's why we didn't spook any on the way in today hopefully they put the feed bag on hopefully this cold weather snowstorm coming they say one to three inches so we'll see what happens can't describe this this is this deer's had our number he's he's, he's a visible giant deer um, we, we've had a bunch of encounters with him Chad's pretty much set his sights on this deer and it comes to gun season and you know we're in here together and it, it, it doesn't get any better we've logged a lot of hours in a tree together over the years moments like this just don't happen that often it's just so cool it's, it's such a rush it's just an awesome deer first deer on the plot today yesterday we you 
you couldn't have messed up a food plot more than what Chad and I did yesterday. And we just felt we're usually really good about that, about access and doing everything right. And you know, we thought today, man, maybe they'll feed, maybe we won't see a deer, we don't know, but we just had to stick in here on this deer and <sighs> doesn't get any better. That's why we do what we do. It's an albino. <laughs> yeah. It's a pie ball. Is that, is that against the rules? Well, here it is, December 17th, second to last day of second gun season. And it all came together. It's, you can't really use words to describe how sweet this is. We put a lot of time, a lot of effort into chasing these whitetails and it's almost hard to believe when it actually works. We spend so much time failing at it day after day, week after week. Finally came together for Chad and I, just doesn't, doesn't get any better than this. Had pictures of him last year, late season. He had broke G2s on both sides and he's a deer that pretty much took up our season. We've, we've been hunting him all year. Chad's had multiple encounters with him. He's gotten the better of us on a couple different sets and he's, he's just seemed to get away from us. But tonight, second to last, day of second gun season, felt the need to feed, came to our cut corn, standing corn plot, and gave us, gave us a crack at them. So couldn't be happier, just doesn't get any better than this.